All right, I think I'm set. <laughs> My name is Gary Michael. I'm going to talk to you about uh, her husband. Brother. I'm going to talk to you about the uh, lymphatic system. Uh, I have a associate's degree in nursing, and I've taken an online herbology course. And have passed it with 100 <laughs> percent. So, uh, so I, I learned a little bit, you know. Here I pick up little stuff here and there along the way. I picked up a little knowledge here there in another place. Anyway, uh, anybody know what the lymphatic system is? Anybody have any idea what it is? I think it's the drainage system, isn't it? It's the, it's the sewer. Yeah. It's the body's sewer. But it doesn't, sewer. Have, any, it it doesn't have any pumps like a heart or anything like that. Though. Exactly. There's no pumping. Now, the lymphatic system, in the nutshell, is the system in the body that will recognize antigens. Now, an antigen is anything that does not belong in the body. It's just this umbrella that term to call it antigen. That's A N T I G E N, antigen. Okay, and actually, is anything that doesn't belong to about uh, dust particles, hmm? uh, smog, uh, all kinds of stuff, uh, debris from uh, bacteria, bacterial infection, viruses, all that stuff. Okay, now, first of all, you got to have some truth. We need some policemen to police the body, don't we? Now, first of all, let me say this. What you're about to hear here. It's not meant to diagnose or treat any disease. <laughs> if you got any kind of medical issues, I recommend that you contact your medical provider. Is that clear? <laughs> so when you hear me talking about stuff, if I say something's good for this or something's good for that, what I'm telling you is that if I were in that situation, that's what I would use. I'm not telling you to go use it. You got it? <laughs> since, since this is on tape, I want to make sure that's clear. So nobody try to sue me. <laughs> Are you know from the internet? now? Nobody try to sue me. Okay, now. Now that we know what the lymphatic system is, it's the drainage system also. Right. Now, first of all, we need some policemen to police the system. They're called the white blood cells or leukocytes. They're the ones that these cells are born in the bone marrow. Most of them are born in the bone marrow. Some are born in some other places too, even the thymus gland, but most of them are born in the bone marrow. That's where they're born. Now, they migrate from the bone marrow and they will go, some will stay in the bone marrow and mature, and they're called B lymphocytes. The B is not for bone. A lot of people think that, but the B is for bursa. Because bursa was something in birds that they discovered way back, uh, something in the gut of birds that uh, was had something to do with the immune system. So when they discovered that the same system operated in man, but it was in the bone marrow, they just kept the B, because they call it B lymphocytes in birds. But we don't have the bursa that birds have. So now, for us, we relate B cells, B lymphocytes, to bone marrow, because that's where they are created, and that's where they generally mature. Now, some of those cells will mature, will uh, migrate to the thymus gland, and guess what they're called? Upper T. T cells. Yeah. T for thymus. And they're mature in the thymus gland. Now, anybody got any idea of what the thymus gland does? What it is? Any clues? The thymus gland, folk, is the cottage. It's the school for T cells. Now, I have to tell you, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. I hope there's no atheists in the house tonight because uh, I'm going to tell you, God set this system up. And he had it together when he set it up. When, he, when you study the human body, you have to say, Woo, Lord, you are awesome. Mm -hmm. Just look at all the things that he put together to, to operate one after another based on this and the other thing. But anyway, in the thymus gland, the T cells will differentiate. Some will become what they call T1. Some will become T2. Others will become uh, natural killer cells. Then there's a natural kill the T cell also, but we're not going to talk about that, we're going to talk about the basic three, the T1, T2, and the uh, natural uh, killer cells. That's what they differentiate there. Now, the thymus gland, in that gland, like I say, it's the schoolhouse, literally, I'm not just making that up, it, it's literally the schoolhouse, they learn how to recognize the enemy. Every cell in your body has got a sp particular DNA code. Hmm? Look at it as an ID card. That's just got an identification card, right? And your identification card will identify you as belonging to this body. Every one of us has got that. It belongs to, to that particular body. Now, sometimes in the thymus gland, some of these cells will become renegade cells. They're, they're radicals. And they'll turn, they'll fight each other. 
Those cells that turn around and fight their own people, they are destroyed in the thymus gland. They never make it out into the circulation because they're too much of a risk. They are destroyed. Now, occasionally the Bible, will, I mean the Bible, <laughs> occasionally the body will make a mistake. You can tell I'm a preacher, huh? <laughs> the Bible is still out. But occasionally the body will make a mistake and not kill that cell that it should have destroyed because the cell turned on each other. You know, turn on top. And when that happens, if that cell ever gets out into the general circulation, what it will do is start a riot. First of all, it start multiplying through mitosis when the cell splits off. Well, each cell will split and split, and then that one will split and that one will split. Before you know it, you got a whole bunch of them. And all of these have the same attitude. Same attitude. I slap anybody I want to slap. I punch and kick anybody. I kill anybody I want to kill. I don't have to follow no rules. That's the attitude. These cells are almost like little people. Look at them that way. They do have attitudes. Okay, now, when that happens, you got a problem on your hand. And some you may come down with what's known as lupus or leukemia. With leukemia, where the cells turn on each other. That's what leukemia is all about. Now, those who graduate from, from the school, the Thymus School, the College of Thymus College, they will be admitted into the regular circulation. And they will go out and they will differentiate according to what the body needs. If they become a T1 helper cell, a T, a T helper 1 cell, they'll be responsible for a process called apoptosis. I'm going to explain that in a minute. If they become T2 cells, then they become a, 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 a responsible for uh, antibodies, for making antibodies. Now, let's say that um, you cut yourself. When you cut yourself and you say you got germs entering your body, when those germs enter the body, the body's got to first be able to recognize them. So the body, the police force, all the white blood cells, they also call phagocytes. The phagocytes are the police force. They're going to come to you and say, let me see your ID card. And you, they, it's got to, they got to flash the card. They can't help it. When they flash that card, the police is going to say, you do not belong in the body. Now, there's a lot of complicated, I'm just doing a simplified version. There's a whole lot of chemistry going on. And a lot of complicated stuff that I don't have time to touch on. But at any rate, uh, they will recognize them as not belonging to the body. Depending on the situation, what might happen is this. First of all, that cell, I mean, let's say it's a virus. When that virus gets into the body, it can make a decision. It can decide, hmm. I like it here in the interstitial fluid. Now, the interstitial fluid is the fluid that bathes the cells. Everybody know about the cells in the body, your body full of cells. You got fluid in between all those cells. That's called interstitial fluid. Okay, uh, they can decide to stay in the inter interstitial fluid or they can decide to enter the cell. Now, if they stay in the interstitial fluid, then the police force can contact and can find them and kill them. But if they decide to hide inside the cell, the police force cannot enter the cell. Why? Because they're too big. The virus is small enough to pass through the wall of the cell. And once he gets into that cell, he's set up a housekeeper. He gets into that cell, and if he's not uh, destroyed, then he's going to start eating up that cell and putting all kinds of poison into that cell. And then he's going to start duplicating and replicating and replicating. And when that cell replicates, it's going to replicate with the same DNA that that germ put into it. And before you know it, you got an infection, a bad infection. So how is that checked? What did the Lord put into our system to be able to handle that? He had to do something. He's all wise, right? He had to figure some kind of way to make it take care of itself. Well, here's what he did. This is, this is just awesome. <laughs> but anyway, uh, when that happens, the thymus, I mean the, 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 the T cells, the T cells has got a decision to make. And they decide, let's see now, there's only one way we can do this. First of all, if it stays in the interstitial fluid, then they're sending the macrophages in. The macrophages will uh, engulf them, will just swallow them. And they'll they chew them up into little bits and pieces and spit them out. Uh, the, 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 the neutrophils uh, will do that. The neutrophils also do that, the macrophages and the neutrophils. They'll spit them out, and then when they do that, they will leave a little cold on top of their cell. Um, the outside of the cell, there'll be a bunch of little coals around there. These coals is a signal to the rest of the body, saying that there's an invader here. I just swallowed one up. And here's what he looks like. And then what happened is the, the natural killer cells, one person said that they're perverts, because they go around and fondle all the cells. They do. 
literally. They go back and they touch, they feel all the cells. But they're not just doing it for fun. They're doing this because they're trying to discover if that cell belongs in the body. If it feels the cell and it feels this little knot up here that, 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 uh, that, that, that was put into the surface by that basal field or the, or the macrophage, then it'll say, oh, this doesn't belong in the body. I need to take it out of here. But natural killer cells, uh, what it would do is it would take a note of that and then it'll run to the bee lymphocytes and tell the bees, listen, here's what's going on. Here's a picture of it. You need to find these guys. The bee lymphocytes will say, I need to make some antibodies. Thank you for the, for the blueprint. So the bee lymphocytes will make antibodies that shape. See, everything has got a shape, a unique shape. So you know, let's say there's a shape like that. Well, what the bee lymphocytes will do is make an antibody that's shaped like that. And they'll go through and latch on to it and take it out of the system. That's the way, that's the way it's meant to, to operate. Uh, now, then you got memory cells that will remember that and say, oh, I remember you. I remember you from, from last week or one just like you. I know what to do for you. So he'll make another antibody and take care of that. Okay, now, I see them. I'm moving so fast. <laughs> I got to keep my mind going. This, I find this to be fascinating myself. But at any rate, uh, what will happen is that once that antibody, that B cell will do that, he'll take it out and destroy it, that cell. Now, meanwhile, the cell, the, the virus that got inside the cell is hiding, and the antibodies can't go into the cell either. So what's got to happen? Well, now, now the B liver, um, the, the, the T cells got to make a decision. They can, and here's what the decision is. Since we can't go in there and get it, we got to kill the whole cell. We got to kill the whole cell along with what's inside it because we can't go in there and get it out. So that's what's, what's happening is that it will kill the whole cell. Once it recognizes that this cell needs to die because it's infected, if you got an infected cell, it's not going to be good for your body because what's going to happen is that each time that cell replicates, the infection grows. That's called malignancy. It'll grow each time and then it'll keep going and going and going. For you know, you got a big mass. You got a big tumor because these was, they were allowed to keep growing on you because your body miscalculated something or it was overwhelmed by so many antigens that it couldn't handle it. That's how we get disease. Okay. Now, uh, once the body discovers that and it goes through and it destroys the whole body, way, that is called apoptosis. Cell death, program cell death is the term for it. Program cell death. What it will do, it will go and it will squirt some stuff in there. Actually, the chemical equation once it finishes squirting stuff in is bleach. You heard me. Bleach. Now you see why bleach kills germs? Kills germs? Bleach can kill germs. Well, inside the body, the body actually will produce bleach down. That's not good for you to go and drink some bleach now. <laughs> Don't go and drink a bleach say, oh, I got to drink some bleach because they... they Bleach kills germs, so I'm going to drink some. Don't do that, you kill yourself. The body knows how much bleach to, 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 to manufacture and how much to squirt out. But that's what it amounts to, bleach, chloride bleach. And it will kill the cell, and it's called programmed death with that cell with that. Now, um, this is so involved. Matter of fact, the next time I do this, guy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a PowerPoint. It's going to be even more interesting. To go along with this right now, just give you an overview of how the immune system works. And uh, you saw with the, the uh, rebounding that by bouncing up and down, you can actually uh, cause your lymphatic system to drain. It can drain out. You want to drain it out. You want to get rid of those toxins. Nothing can hurt you unless it's allowed to build up to a toxic level. Nothing. You, you, you get that? Cyanide cannot hurt you unless it's allowed to accumulate to a toxic level. How many people realize that apple and pear seeds got cyanide in them? Anybody know that? Yeah. In your seeds. In the seeds. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, the seeds. The seeds have cyanide in You can eat an apple or a pear with the seeds and it's not going to hurt you. But you eat a cup of seeds and you'll die yeah. from cyanide poison. See, so your body can handle some of it. But when you overwhelm the body, you come down with disease. But the same thing is true with the immune system. Is our uh, when the germs or antigen, when they're allowed to build up to a toxic level, you get a disease. Water drinking is another good way for flushing that out. How do you boost the immune system? Drinking water is a major way to do it. Alzheimer's disease. We know in Alzheimer's disease, the brain shrinks. 
They also know there's an accumulation of aluminum in the brain. They know that from examination. If the brain is 87% water, and it is, and you don't drink enough water, what's going to happen to it? It's Hello? It's going to shrink. <laughs> Hello, Alzheimer's. It's going to shrink. The average person drinks less than a cup of water a day. That's a shame. It is. They're drinking soda pop, coffee, coffee. tea, yes. caffeinated yes. tea. Yeah. Not, not herbal tea, caffeinated tea. And by the way, I've heard people drink coffee and say, oh, well, the coffee's got water in it, yes, but the water, the caffeine in the coffee will pull out more water that's in it from your body and dry your bones up. Hmm? So water drinking is extremely important to drink the proper amount of water because that way it'll keep your system flushed out and, and things won't have a chance to build up. The aluminum won't have a chance to build up in your brain because you're flushing it out. Colon cleansing is another good way uh, to help keep your system in check. There are several herbs, there are a bunch of different herbs. For a man with prostate problems, when you reach your 50s, you need to start looking at your prostate gland, all the men. And with that, salt palmetto berry, pumpkin seed, these are good for uh, that uh, water little seed. These are good for the prostate gland. And see anything in the pumpkin family? Watermelon, squash, all that stuff. It's good for the prostate gland. Uh, there's some other herbs also for that too. But uh, the salt palmetto and the pumpkin seed are two major ones that you can use. You can take those to make a tincture out of them actually. Uh, also for uh, this SEIT, tea, which has got four herbs, originally got four herbs, but they kicked it up to eight herbs, diff different herbs in it. And that tea will also boost your immune system. Now, what do I mean by boost the immune system? Because there are some times if you got a diseased immune system, that might not be a time to boost it to a certain level because you boost the replication of the problem. So it all depends on what's going on. Now with chemotherapy, what's happening with chemotherapy is that they will send chemo in to destroy the cancer cells. But chemo can't differentiate. The chemo will fail the thymus school because they can't be able, they, they're not able to recognize the enemy from what belongs in the body. They won't recognize it. And that's what happened with those cells that fail the thymus school, those T cells, and, and that's why they're destroyed because they don't recognize the enemy. They didn't pay attention in school. They slept. Now, I, you heard me say slept, right? Guess what, folks? That's almost literally what happens. Some of the cells will sleep sometimes for years, lying dormant, sleep, until a situation is right when the environment is in a certain state, then they can come out and be activated. A cell is activated also when it encounters a germ, an antigen. It becomes activated. Now it's ready to do some work and to beat them up and to take them out of the system. There's a lot of the details that are left out because there's a, so much involved in this. Uh, but anyway, that's what you do now. As far as, like I say, as far as boosting the system, uh, dandelion greens that grow wild in your yard. Uh huh. That's a good cold. That's a good uh, system detoxifier. Good blood, blood cleansing. Cleansing. blood cleansing. Good blood cleansing. Also, raw foods is extremely important. Now, raw foods has got the live enzymes in it, right? Live, live enzymes are required for every action in your body. There's nothing you can do in your body, that your body, no function in your body that can function without live enzymes. Now, when you're born, you're born with a certain deposit of live enzymes. You got a certain bank or stores of live enzymes. And as you grow older, if you don't put the live enzyme back in there, you're using up your bank. You, you're using up, you're writing checks. And you ain't making no deposits. <laughs> and if you write too many checks, where well, they start bouncing, you're going to die. Literally, you're going to die. This is why eating raw foods will cause you, cause your body to pull the stores from the raw foods that you put in. You'll use those enzymes and keep your stores intact. Right? Now, I'm not advocating that everybody stop eating cooked foods and just eat all raw. No, I don't advocate that. I don't do that. But you need to eat enough raw foods to keep your stores up. Mm -hmm. hmm? There are a lot of people who are 100% raw, and they do fine. I'm just not one of them. <laughs> and they do fine. But I'm not against it because the thing about it is that you can't get in the better than if you decide to do that. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not going to hurt yourself. But I, I just like a, a healthy balance between the two, because there are certain things that are not released until heat, heat is applied to them, certain foods. But you need to check your diet and make sure you're eating fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables. Matter of fact, that's how you boost your, your immune system. Fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables, and drinking the proper amount of water. That will boost your system. 
Even. I mean, I'm 62 years old. I feel good. Like James Brown, I feel good. You know? So, so I, I ain't going to dance for you, though. But I feel good. See, now why is that? Because of my diet, for one. I eat fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables. And I drink my water. Sometimes I miss my water. But guess what, folks? When I miss my water, I don't beat myself up. I don't think I'm going to die and go to hell because I didn't drink my quarter of water today. So don't get fanatical about it. If you miss your water today, try to get it tomorrow. Don't beat yourself up. Just try to get it tomorrow. I'm watching my time, too. <laughs> try to get it tomorrow. So that's, that's pretty much an overview of the immune system. Any questions, first of all? Any questions? No, but I have some information to add to you. You're talking about Alzheimer's being connected with aluminum. I was shocked when I read the label on something the other day in the grocery store. What was it? Uh, baking powders. There's two types, oh, yeah. and one of them has an aluminum oh, yeah. salt in it. Right. Now that's soluble in aluminum. People worry about getting aluminum from their cooking uh, ware, but uh, most of that is insoluble. And it makes yeah. you wonder, you know, every time you eat a slice of bread from the store, do they use that in there? I don't know. Now there's one called rum food. Yeah, That's mean, not, doesn't have aluminum. Have no, I was talking about, you know, I know what you're talking about. read from commercial bakeries, what have they got in there? I know what you're talking about. Like, yeah. uh, was it Clab Clab a Girl? Yeah. That's, not, right. that's making power. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. That's why you need to make your own. But yeah. Rumford does have aluminum, even though it says it doesn't, it does. Really? It's made from baking soda. Yeah. They so so they allow on the label then? Well, they just they didn't put it on the label. When you read the label, you don't see aluminum exactly. there. So it's it hidden aluminum, is what you're saying? It is. It has wow, I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hmm. I better really drink my water because I use rum for <laughs> I better really drink my water on uh, Swiss, Swiss uh, uh, products or something. There's another brand, uh, I'm trying to think of the name Featherweight. of Featherweight. Featherweight. That's what I'm trying to think of. Featherweight. Energy has one. Energy and Featherweight. Those two are okay. Okay, Energy. And featherweight. Okay, those are the two to look for. Then I think we're gonna be switching too. I didn't realize it. See, how much you learn when you come together like this? Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, I just I had a question just now. It just came up mm -hmm. when you mentioned the soda, baking soda. Yeah. I know it's wrong. It's no good to eat. Is what is the exact reason for it? Do you know? Well, baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. Okay. Is what it is a sodium bicarbonate? It's now. Just, it just amazes me when you go to what are quote healthy recipes right. and so they sodium have is salt. Baking soda. Yeah. yeah. Baking soda. Yeah, right. sodium is salt, sodium bicarbonate is, yeah, is what's in there. Sodium. Excessive sodium in the diet raises your blood pressure. Yes, yes, it can raise the blood pressure. Yeah. Can. Uh, yeah. yeah, uh there's something I was gonna mention here. I had my little note paper, I didn't even look at it. But um I don't know what it was now. Anyway, that. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got some out of it. And until next time. You gonna run off and leave us like this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Until next time. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank All right, we're going to start this little presentation. <coughs> Give me just a last little swallow. Good breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> the jelly belt didn't wait if I ever opened the restaurant. I want him to be my sausage man. <laughs> but then I turned and said, it ain't happening. <laughs> 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 Brother Don's a good pancake man. Um, got Brother John back there. I think somebody's doing eggs. I think everybody did an excellent job. Amen. Okay, we've already hit our opening prayer, so we're going to go ahead and start with the presentation. It's my herbs. Uh, you have, most of you know who I am. I'm here at my... Somebody just asked me what it, the ASN stands for. Right here. It stands for Associate Degree Nursing. Not Nutrition Nursing. Okay. Now the Bible tells us in Psalm 101, 14, that it causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth. So God put the herbs in the land, but he used them for the service of man. 
Amen. And so the earth can be your food. It is your food. Your food is your medicine. Oh, here's my disclaimer. <clears throat> I am not a medical doctor. And I do not practice medicine. I only hold an associate's degree in nursing. Anything you hear or see in this presentation is for educational purposes only. If you have medical issues, you need to seek help from your health care provider. Here, you will see and hear what I would do under certain circumstances. <laughs> I am not recommending that you do what I would do. I will not be held responsible for your decision. Is that all right? Huh? Does that make, did I just cover myself well? <laughs> I think I just did. <laughs> See, some days some people are so happy. They go and try something, you be allergic to something, and want to sue the person that told them about it. <laughs> High blood pressure, that seems to be a common thing, especially among black people. It's high blood pressure. And there's, uh, here's some food. So this is going to be a brief because there's so much involved in this kind of thing. It can take us a long time. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I'm going to be kind of hitting as, as we travel, okay? Just, just, just the surface is all I'm doing. Some things I go a little bit deeper. When we get to the immune system, I go a little bit deeper. But high blood pressure, there's certain foods that help stabilize your blood pressure. Did you know that? Raisins, bananas. Dark chocolate, hibiscus. Are anybody familiar with the hibiscus flower? You never seen the hibiscus flower? I don't know if they grow here. In Florida, we used to have them growing in our yard. It's a red, you can see what it looks like right there, hibiscus. It's also called sorrel, S-O-R-R-E-L-L. -R -R -E it makes a wonderful tea. We, we, we have some. We use it. And it, it'll really, it'll dark red that is put a lot of color in the tea too quickly too. And it's medicinal also. Uh, you also got spinach. Everybody knows about spinach. Popeye told us about that, didn't he? That's a powerful herb, spinach. Garlic. Garlic is good for so many things. You got oranges, sunflower seeds, sweet potatoes, which is a powerful food, and watermelon. All these will help to stabilize your blood pressure and to keep it off it goes out. Now, I know one lady, um, when her blood pressure was up, she could feel it. She would start eating raw oats, like oatmeal. Raw oats would bring that pressure down also. Now my grandmother used to use lemon juice. And it would bring out the doctor used to tease her called her lemon juice. That would bring that pressure down also. Um, another thing, this garlic, you can take that garlic and I'm, I'm gonna hit you that later. Let me trust you a little bit later on the garlic. I'm gonna come back and say something like that. A major problem also is dehydration. Think about it. All of your cells were made to be hydrated with water. Right? Soda pop is all right in its moderation, but God didn't make you just to drink soda pop or just to drink coffee. He made you drink water more than anything else. All of your cells need to stay hydrated, otherwise they'll dry up and die. That's right. A lot of diseases are misdiagnosed. If the doctor said you got the creeping heebie-jeebies, guess what? You might have the creeping heebie-jeebies, but what he did not tell you is that your creeping heebie-jeebies was secondary to dehydration. Dehydration was first, which caused the creeping heebie-jeebies. That's something that nurses just say. We, we make, I don't know who made it up originally, but all nurses know about the creeping heebie-jeebies. Keeping jeebies in the, the creeping crud. Anyway, <clears throat> pork is not your enemy. A lot of people say, oh, don't eat too much pork because it's going to run your blood pressure up. Pork is not your enemy. See what's in there? Can anybody see what's happening here? You see what somebody's doing? What do you think they're doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're pouring the water out. Pork is not your enemy. Salt is not the enemy. That's right. Are you getting enough water? Your body requires salt. You would die if you don't get enough salt in your system. Did you know that? See, so salt is extremely important, but drinking water has to balance it. You can get too much water and wash out your electrolytes, your potassium, your uh, calcium, phosphorus. You can get too much water, magnesium, and wash all that stuff out. I know people that's happened to it, they died because they got too much water. Matter of fact, some years ago, there were some teenagers having a water drinking contest. You may have heard about some of them. The winner died. Because he had too much water, washed out his electrolytes, and died. Overdose on water. So you need to drink water in moderation. Use common sense. Now what a lot of them say is that if you take your body weight 
and, and, and uh, you drink that amount of ounces in water per day, then that's appropriate. Dr. Faradun Batman Gaddish, we just call him an affectionate Dr. Batman. This man here, he's Iranian, and back uh, when they was having uh, some kind of revolution, was the 80s, I mean, can you remember the years like the 80s, the 70s, the 80s? Political war, they were having the Some along in this political war, and they captured him as a political enemy, I mean, political prisoner. prisoner. And when they uh, took him to the prison camp, he didn't have any of his tools. There was one guy that they had peptic ulcers that was contained of pain. I mean, he was pain, excruciating pain. And Dr. Batman didn't have anything to give him, so he had him to drink some water. The man drank the water. He told him to drink, I think, four glasses of water. And then two glasses after that, every hour. A glass every hour. Well, in 20 minutes, his pain was gone. It didn't come back because he kept drinking that water. So that inspired him to start studying water, the effects of water on the human body. So he did, and he wrote several books, but we have these two books here. The first one's called, You Are Not Sick, You're Not Thirsty, You're Sick. Like, you're not sick, you're thirsty. And the other is called, Your Body's Many Cries for Water. These two powerful books, and it talks a lot about water. I saw a seminar once from him. It was a, a debate between him and the medical doctor. The medical doctor was trying to put him in the corner to make him look like a fool. Batman shone like the sun. <laughs> I was so proud of him. He made that medical doctor look stupid. When he was trying to corner him up, he made that man look stupid with just plain common sense stuff. Common sense tells you that if your body is uh, mostly water, that you need to keep water in it. That's one of the most important things we can put in our body is water. Sometimes you can have a headache. Go drink one glass of water, that headache will leave. Did you know that? Yes. Also, uh, like peptic problems, gastric, gastritis, that kind of thing, sometimes just drinking water will help that. Now, see, I use uh, peppermint oil. We're gonna, I'm going to get that a little bit later. Aluminum and Alzheimer's disease. Aluminum fries your brain. Now, they know that in the brains of Alzheimer's patients, they find aluminum deposits in the brain. They also know that the brain shrinks when you get Alzheimer's. Now, if the brain is 87% water, and it is about 80% water, and you're not drinking enough water, hello, what's going to happen to it? Is it logical that it will shrink? Huh? Yeah. If you got a balloon that's full of water, you take some out, what's going to happen? It's going to shrink, right? Also, uh, the aluminum deposits. See, nothing can hurt you unless it's allowed to accumulate to a toxic level. Did you get that? Cyanide can't hurt you unless you get enough of it. Did you know that apple and pear seeds have cyanide in it? Well, you can eat a pear, pear or an apple with its seeds, it's not going to hurt you. But you eat a cup of those seeds and you will die from cyanide poisoning. So, I said that to demonstrate the fact that if we flush our system out and we keep it hydrated, we have less chances of disease. We're going to move on now because there's a lot more I can say about that. So, But anyway, we're going to move on for the sake of time. Uh, breast cancer. Breast cancer is a prevalent thing. And guess what? It's not just women. Men are getting breast cancer also. Did you know that, fellas? That you can get breast cancer too, just like a woman can? But you know what? Anybody have an idea what breast cancer usually shows up first? What part of the breast? Does anybody know? In the breast. Huh? I know you know. I know you know. What's that? Okay, lymph node, that, that, that's, well, I'm going to show you. Now, my little lines ain't that straight, but you can see the demonstrations. The upper outer quadrant, see the arm people will be right in here, right? So the upper outer quadrant of the breast, I couldn't, I, I told my back, my, my wife, I can't use a picture of a real one up here. So what the best thing to talk about, find out a bra. I thought, okay, good. So found a picture of a bra to show you the upper outer quadrant. That's what breast cancer used to show you. Now watch this next slide. Look at that. See what the upper outer quadrant is? You see that armpit? You see that there? That's the upper outer quadrant. Now, what will happen is that when you use aluminum, in the older, a lot of aluminum base, it clogs up your, that's why it's called antiperspirant, it clogs up your sweat glands. God made you to sweat. He made you to sweat. But when you clog up the sweat glands, then the toxins is going to move in the route of least resistance. 
which will be from here, your armpit, see, remember the armpit is all in there, isn't it? You see that upper outer quadrant? That's where it's going to back up into. That's why breast cancer is usually found in the upper outer quadrant of the breast first. Then it'll spread from there. This is one reason why, folks. Check your deodorant. If you got aluminum in it, I recommend you do something else or use something else. I'm going to move on to colds and flu. Like I said, I'm just briefly touching on some of these things. Colds and the flu. And this is flu season, isn't it? Cold and flu season right now is fight the flu. Can you avoid the flu shot? So many people run and get that flu shot. We haven't had a flu shot. We haven't had a flu shot. I don't think we haven't had a flu shot. We don't get the flu either. But we know what to do, and I'm going to share with you what to do. The cell of the wall, the wall of the cell of the human body, has a membrane called a semi-permeable membrane. A permeable, permeability means being able to pass through it. Semi-permeable membrane means that some things, excuse me, some things can pass through, some things cannot. Like in this sifter here. You know what that is, a flower, right? How can the flower get through that? Because it's small enough to pass through the screen, right? Suppose I put marbles in here. You think it'll pass through? Huh? No, why not? Because the marbles are too big to pass through that screen, right? This, this is a semi-permeable membrane. The flower can come through, but the marbles cannot. With the cells of the human body, is a semi-permeable membrane. Certain things can pass through, certain things cannot. Waste can pass out of the cells because they're small enough to go through the screen. Now, uh, a bat, just say a virus, for example. If a virus attacks you, you take in a virus through whatever means. That virus, viruses are not stupid. They know that if they stay in the main circuit, circulation system, uh, a macrophage or some type of a, of a white blood cell soldier is going to come through and take him out of there. So you know what his goal is? To get inside the cell so he can proliferate, so he can magnify and uh, 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 grow inside that cell and replicate inside the cell. So the virus is small enough <clears throat> to go through that membrane. But the white blood cells can't fit through that because they're too big. So you know what they do? God has got this system set up. So, I mean, God is just powerful. The way he built this body, the logic that he used in it, and the, the mechanism, you're almost like little people inside your body. Here's what happened. The virus will come through and get inside their cell and start to replicate. Now, if they replicate to a certain point, then you're in trouble because what will happen is, if that cell divides, guess what? All, them, all that virus, it divides along with it. So instead of one cell full of virus, now you've got two. And when they start splitting, you got more, more, and more. Each time they spit, you got more. That's called uh, proliferation. That's how. Uh, germs spread, I guess you could say, throughout the body, metastasis. Cancer is abnormal growth of tissue. That's what cancer is. Okay, so when that starts happening, that's what happened. Now here's what the, where God set the immune system. He's got some uh, soldiers in your system that will say, there's, this, uh, there's one that will make a decision, say, you know, we can't get in there to get the virus out of that cell. And there's so much of it in there until the cell is, is really a bad cell that's going to replicate and duplicate. So the only choice we have is to kill that cell. That's right. So he'll send another soldier by that will inject a hormone into the cell that will tell the cell to kill yourself. It's called apoptosis. Check it out. Google it sometimes. Apoptosis. A-P-O-P-T-O-S-I-S. Apoptosis. Cell death. Which program, or something that's called program death, where that cell will actually kill itself to save the system. Now, what will happen is that if your system gets overwhelmed by so much of this stuff, then you just overwhelm your immune system. The immune system is the strong, is the, the stronghold. The immune system, your, the strength of your immune system has a lot to do with your health. Elderberry grows wild, especially here in Tennessee. We got elderberry on our property. Matter of fact, a few years ago, I made two gallons of elderberry tincture that, that, that we take. And what elderberry would do is coat the cell so that the virus can't enter. Ah, that's why people take elevator don't usually come down with flu. Now we had a neighbor, we have a neighbor, and she uh, she was getting the flu every year. You know flu shots still getting the flu. So we shared some elderberry tinkle with her a couple of years ago, was that Pat? Maybe a couple of years no, ago. That was about five years ago. Is that, that long ago? Okay, anyway, that year, 
guess what? She did not come down with the flu. The next year, she forgot the ticket, and guess what? She came down with the flu. <laughs> so Elabe is very powerful. Think about it. Sambucus nigra is the name. That's the chemical name for the plant itself. Sambucol is a, is a, a trade name that they make a, a syrup out of it. They also make a tablet. This is tablet form over here. And this is a syrup over here. You get it from the drugstore. They know this stuff works. See, if you go and ask them for the only reason why they got it so they can sell it, but they don't want you to know about it. The doctors don't want you to know about it because you mess, you won't be running to them as often. And see, they get to charge you an office visit every time you walk through the door. They don't want to lose that. You're going to take some elder bear and don't have to come to them. They're losing money, right? But the pharmaceuticals are so greedy, they say, well, somebody's going to say, they're going to get it from somebody, might well get it from us. <laughs> so go, then you don't have a house called an uh, 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 office visit when you go to the drugstore. You just go buy the stuff, right? So they'll have it. Also, this uh, natural news, which is uh, claimed to be the world's top news source in natural health. Here's what they said about elderberry. Black elderberry though, is the most antiviral substance known to man. And Google that sometimes. Just, just look at elderberry. You'll find a whole bunch of good stuff about elderberry. As far as fighting viruses is concerned, remember the virus is the tiniest one. Bacteria is larger than virus, but the virus is real tiny. Elderberry wine. Elderberry wine. That's all I've ever heard. Yeah, really? There's an elderberry syrup too. They make an elderberry jam also, a jelly. Some of these old ladies know how to make the elderberry jelly. Yeah, so any way you can get elderberry. Elderberry is like garlic. Any way you can take garlic is good. There's no bad way to take in garlic. Any way. From fresh garlic to garlic powder. Garlic is a powerful, powerful herb, and God put it there for us. It's antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal, just antimicrobial. <coughs> garlic is powerful, friends, I'm telling you. It's good for cold too, but cancer cannot live in clean blood. It can't, it can't survive. In clean, oxygenated blood, it cannot survive. See, so remember, it's our immune system that's, that's giving us the problem. Blood cleanses. There are several blood cleansers that God made that's natural. See, the blood can be clean. Dandelion. Now, everybody knows what a dandelion is, right? Goes wild in your yard, right? People mow it down and run to the dark. But this is a powerful herb. Every part from the root to the flowers of a dandelion green is a good, uh, they're a good blood cleanser. My wife, when you made some dandelion root coffee, that wasn't bad. That's right, she roasted it. Roasted the roots and made a coffee out of it. Any way you can get it in, it's good. You can just have that dandelion tea. Also, you can use the greens uh, in a salad. If you just say you're going to put, 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 uh, cook a big pot of collard greens, say a pot like that, big pot of collard greens, I would, if it was me, I would grab a handful of dandelion flour, I mean, uh, uh, leaves and throw them in that pot. It would cleanse your blood. Red clover. Anybody recognize red clover? Okay, oh, yeah, I forgot I'm getting the country folk. <laughs> if, I, if I was in Los Angeles, some of the folk would know what I'm talking about, huh? <laughs> yeah, so Dandelion, I mean, uh, red clover grows wild in the yard also. We have that in our yard also. And you make a tea out of that. Matter of fact, the flowers, now when you first pick the flowers, what I recommend you do is put them in a little salt water and shake them. There'll be little tiny bugs in there. And when you put them in that salt water, they'll float to the top. We just take them and eat them straight. Eat them just in a salad, or you can make a tea out of it, out of the flowers and the leaves. I never dealt with the root of the of the um, red clover. There's a white clover also, but the red clover. There's also a crimson clover, but the red is the most powerful for being a cancer fighter. It's known for it. <clears throat> exercise, exercise. Now anybody here can't use any more exercise. Let me see your hand. Stand up. <laughs> <laughs> No liars in the building today. <laughs> we can all use more exercise, right? Because I'm going to talk about my... Well, anyway. <laughs> I'll tell you what exercise does. Exercise gets your lymph system moving. Remember, your whole immune system is your lymph system. That's your immune system, the lymph system. It's uh, draining off toxins. Toxins is what causes disease. It's the buildup of toxins. If you're exercising and drinking enough water, then what's going to happen is that your cells are going to release its toxins into the circulation. Now, anybody here for rebounding? You know what the rebound is? That's one right there. That's rebounding right there. Many trampolines. 
This is, a, this is not just a toy for folk for children. It's a powerful tool. Powerful tool. We, we bought one a few years ago, but anyway, uh, you can see some things like the 10 health benefits of rebounding. Jumping on the trampoline. Said it increased white blood cells, and that's your soldiers right there. Your white blood cell count. Stimulate lymphatic system, detoxify, boost energy, improve digestion, improve varicose veins, weight loss, prevent cancer, build bone mass, and reduce cellulite. Now see that rebounder, what happens is as you're bouncing, your cells are releasing its toxins into the system. Now sometimes what happens is that you feel a little sicky. That's one thing about detoxing. Anytime you any form of detox might make you feel a little sick. And the reason why is because the toxins are coming out of the cells into your general circulation and you will feel it until it exits out. Once it's eliminated through the process of elimination, then you feel fine and you'll be glad that you, that you took it. But some people will stop doing the detox because they're feeling bad. They don't realize it's normal to feel bad during that time. Now, rebounding. Here's a chart here. Three minutes of rebound on rebound is equivalent to walking 1.2 miles, uh, walking for 33 minutes. See, the average person walks about, I think it's eight miles per hour, three, three or four miles, I don't remember now what the, what the mile is. Three or four. Three or four that the average person know walk. Now, 12 and a half minutes is equivalent to walking five miles, 12 and a half minutes bouncing, five miles, and working, walking for two Hours in 18 minutes. Wow. Sounds, sounds crazy, doesn't it? Do your own research. 25 minutes of rebounding is equal to 10 miles walking and walking for 4 hours and 35 minutes. And the thing about that, you don't have to be doing no big old violent bounce. You can do what they call a health bounce, which is your feet never leave the pad. You're simply doing that. That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing. And by doing that, you're causing your cells to shake their contents out of the toxins that can pass through that semi-permeable membrane to shake them out into the system and you will eliminate them. Here's what NASA said about rebounding. NASA rebounding report, Albert E. Carter said it, NASA confirmed it. Rebound exercise is the most efficient, effective form of exercise yet devised by man. And that's from the Miracles of Rebound Exercise, Albert E. Carter, the National Institute of Reboundology and Health Inst uh, Incorporated, Edmund Washington, 1979. Edmund Washington. See, so it's powerful. Now, the immune system here, these are different organs of it, but I'm, I'm going to mostly, I'm going to focus on the thymus gland and the bone marrow. The thymus gland and the bone marrow. You've heard of T cells? Anybody ever heard of T cells? and B cell, T lymphocytes, and B lymphocytes. But the T lymphocytes come from the thymus gland. That's where they were created, in the thymus gland. The B lymphocytes are in the bone marrow, but originally from the bursa of birds, which is something in the stomach. But then they found that the same action took place in the bone marrow of humans. They kept the B part for B lymphocytes, and that's where it comes from there. Now, the thymus gland, believe it or not, I'll show you how intelligent God is. This thymus gland that you just saw is literally the schoolhouse for your immune system, for your soldiers, your white blood. It's a schoolhouse, folks. They actually learn who the enemy is and who's not the enemy. These belong in the body. These over here do not belong in the body. They get to recognize that in the thymus gland, and they, they actually have an examination. God is awesome now. An examination, the T cell, that's what that T likes T is for. Thymus. They were created in the thymus gland. The ones in the bone marrow was created in the bone marrow, but they migrated to the thymus gland for school. So they can learn who to recognize and who to take out of the system. So what happens is that, uh, and I explained part of this earlier when I was talking about how uh, they could get in the cell, some of the devices can get in the cell. But bacteria is another one of our enemies that floats around in the system. And the thymus gland, they learn to recognize, see, every cell that God created in your body has a number, an identification. Now, I don't mean literally a one, two, three, four, five. But it's an identification code. That's the best way to do it. Numbers are a good way to explain so we can understand it, okay? But there's an identification chemical, identification code for every cell that belongs in your body. Your chemical code is different from his chemical code. That's why... We need, they have a, a, like a transplant going on, 
That's why they have to have all the cyclosporin and some of these other medications to trick his system into thinking that it's, your, that it's his and not yours. You see what I'm talking about? See, so God put a code there, and there are certain parts of the immune system that would go through what the medical people say, they go through and fondles every cell. So it goes through and it touches every cell, and it's looking for that code. Do you belong in this body or not? And if it says, yes, you belong in this, you belong. But if they, they discover that the code doesn't match the code that's supposed to be in this body, that identification number, then it sends a signal to somebody else and say, listen, we got to be true to him. And he's in sector four, dot, dot, dot. You know what I'm talking about? Describe where he is. And then when your cell gets invaded, and uh, as I said earlier, and start to proliferate inside the cell, it's, it, there's a thing called presentation. It's amazing. God made the thing so that when a cell gets infected, there'll be a, a presentation. It's called presentation. Something will occur on the surface, on the outside of that cell, to tell the soldiers that this is a bad cell. Whew, God's got it hooked up. I, see, I can go deep in that, but I don't want to. Anyway, uh, that's basically just the tip of the iceberg. There's a cartoon version, folks, that I think you will enjoy if you like cartoons. It's called Once in a Life. Called Once in a Life. If you go to YouTube and type in Once in a Life cartoon, you're going to get a whole slew of them explaining this immune system. And as I watch the cartoon, I say to myself, I always say to my wife, somebody did some serious research because it's so accurate. Some stuff that I learned in nursing school, I see it in that cartoon, like, this is really accurate. Who will put this together? It's a very good one, so I would recommend that you go look at some of those once in a life, is what, what the series is called. Prostate gland. Now, men, I'm so, so sorry, ladies, this don't apply to you. <laughs> you ain't got one. <laughs> well, technically you do. I my wife is not there, she's like, technically you do, but it's not called a prostate gland. Okay, we're not going to do that. But anyway, the prostate gland wraps around the neck of the bladder. You got the kidneys here, you got the ureters, which is, uh, the urine is made here, and the waste travels down the ureters into the bladder, then it travels out of the bladder and out of the system, down the urethra and out of the system. But well, the prostate gland wraps around the neck of the urethra, and when a man has an enlarged prostate gland, like over here, what it does is squeezes off the urethra so that it'll dribble instead of having a full flow. It will dribble because it's squeezing it off, constricting the flow of it. That's why you, know, you need to do something about it because then what's going to happen is going to back up into the bladder. Now God made this system, let show you how awesome God is. How do you know who's going to go? You know how you know? God put stretch receptors in the bladder, switches. So when the bladder stretches to a certain point, it sends a signal to the brain saying, you got to go. That's how you know you got to go. Because it's stretched to the point where it triggered that switch. Is God awesome or what? Did he know what he was doing when he made this body or what? All the little detail, and so many we don't even know about, God put it together to keep us running smoothly. Wow. <laughs> now, what about your kidneys? What was that? Uh, spike the kidneys. What about the kidneys? kidneys. What about them? Uh, what's the basic, the basic function of your kidneys? Your kidney, each one of your kidneys have ne uh, nephrons in it. Believe it or not, God put one million, and I'm literal. At least one million nephron in every kidney. Each nephron is a chemistry lab. They make your urine out of waste. They take the waste and uh, it's a little cycle called Krebs cycle where it creates the waste product and it slowly trickles it into the bladder. That's how it works. It slowly trickles it into the bladder until the bladder reaches a point where it stresses and say, okay, you got to go get rid of some of, the, some of that now. And you release and it goes back down. The switch cuts off. You go back down. I don't know if that's answering your question or not. Is it? Huh? Yes. Okay. Saw palmetto berry. It's good for the prostate gland. Now, when we were in Florida, we had these going in our yard. At the time, I wasn't an herbalist then, so I had no idea what, you know. You see why I call it saw palmetto. See the saw edges? All palmetto don't have that saw edge. Some are smooth. But the saw palmetto got these little teeth on it. That's why it's called saw palmetto berry. And they do have berries, different colors. They kind of go into down here up in the bear, down up in there somewhere, the plant. Now, this is different from a palmetto tree. It looks kind of similar, but the palmetto is a lot bigger and a taller tree. When we were kids, we used to use palmetto branches for horses. We used to, we used to straddle this part here, this long stem. That was the horse's tail back there. We'd tie a rope to this end of it, we'd be 
Run it through the yard. We on our horses. <laughs> Children. Back during those days, kids got a lot of exercise outside. You know, we didn't have all these little mobile devices. But Saul Pal Melberry, Solar Ray is one company that makes them. I used to buy mine in bulk from Bulk Herbs and Loboville. I just get them in bulk and have my big mom stuff out there. Pumpkin seed. That's another thing that's good for uh, prostate gland. Any way you can get a pumpkin seed. Some people eat them like nuts. I don't care for pumpkin seeds, period. But I made a tincture using them, pumpkin seed. That's also good. Um, also, I think anything in the squash family, like pumpkin seed, squash, watermelon seeds, all those are good for, for prostate. Uh, also, zinc. Zinc is another thing. Well, pumpkin seed got zinc in it. That's the thing. Like the salt palmetto, it got zinc in it. And that's the, one of the active ingredients that's going to help to bring that swelling down if you got it. Uh, by the fact, I'll give you a little question, I'll give you a little uh, story. My father, he's 94 years old now, but years of, well, I guess maybe a couple years ago, he was having an enlarged prostate, and I gave him some of the tension, and it went down. It went down, so he thought he'd try doing without it and see what happened. And he called me and said, I went all over myself. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't hold it. You know. So apparently it worked. Okay, now. Urinary tract infection, they could call UTI. Everybody familiar with UTIs? Okay, well, UTI, that's what it is, a urinary tract infection. Usually it's, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the bacteria now. Anyway, cranberry juice is one of the best things you can use for a UTI. You know why? Because cranberry juice is high in sulfur. The drug, when I was doing nursing, the drug that we used mostly for UTIs was Bactrim DS which had a high sulfur content in it. Well, God put it in the cranberries. You don't need no Bactrim DS. He'll get you some cranberry juice and drink it. <laughs> you get the same thing. It won't cost you the arm and the leg that your doctor going to charge you. You don't have to go get no prescription. As the song says, Jesus is my prescription. <laughs> he, 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 he gives me all my medicine in the room. So this is the room of cranberry juice, folks. That'll help your your your, uh, your whole urinary system. Liver and gallbladder. Gallbladder is good for uh, anything that eat something greasy. That gallbladder goes in the ash. Liver is the biggest detoxing unit in your body. That's why it's so important. So you can cleanse. Here's some foods that'll help to naturally cleanse your liver. Simple food. Garlic again. Garlic is. A, I'm telling you, folks. Garlic is a powerful herb. Garlic, grapefruit, green tea. Bill of Gore, I'm not familiar with Bill of Gore. I never had doubts. So I can't say much about Bill of Gore. Arugula for sure. Arugula, anybody familiar with arugula? Nobody. It's a green, but it has a unique taste that I can't even describe. Uh, I can't describe what the taste is like. Some people like it, some people don't like it. We gave missionary fish or something, she didn't care for it that much. Some people don't, but I like it. My wife likes it. We eat, eat it in greens, in salads, any way you can eat it. That's arugula, that's good. Dandelion greens, that's another good cleanser. Uh, you got spinach, everybody knows about spinach, mustard greens, chicory, avocado, walnuts, and turmeric. Now walnut is also good for the brain. Notice what a walnut looks like. Huh? Doesn't it look like a brain? A whole walnut? Was God giving us a hint? Hint, hint, hint? Huh? <laughs> he was giving us a hint. See, the coconut... There's another powerful herb, but you know, coconut, you know how God made the coconut? He made it so it's hard to get into it, didn't he? You know why? Because you shouldn't have a whole lot of coconut. You can over, overdo coconut, so God made it harder to get into. Now, banana, see how easy it is to get a banana? That's okay. An apple, just grab it and do that and, and bite it. That's, you have to do that first. And bite it, right? See, so why did God fix an apple like that? Because you can eat all of them, put as much as you want to. That's was God knows he doing the what? <laughs> Did he set us up? Now here, uh, oh, this over here is, is uh, milk thistle. Milk thistle is one of the most powerful uh, liver cleansers that we know about. Milk thistle. It grows wild also. Now we have bull thistle growing now, y'all. I don't think we have the milk thistle. You can buy it here. You can buy it there. You can buy this, uh, some, this suppository form, but guess what? God made a garlic. Look how that garlic is shaped. Don't See how the suppository is shaped? That's a picture of an actual clove of garlic, too, by the way. 
That's a real code for God. And that's a suppository. Do you see any similarities? See, with that blood pressure, when some, this must be known to have with blood pressure that's, that's really high, people are known to use garlic, a garlic clove as a suppository. But if you do that, I recommend you take a, like a, a needle and thread and run it through there and leave enough thread to be able to pull it out. You insert that in your rectum, just like a regular suppository. And after a while, you'll bring that blood pressure down, and when you do, pull it out. We won't spend time on that. That's what you get to know about. Toxic buildup. Talk to anybody, anybody familiar with chemtrails? Anybody know what chemtrails chem are? Trails. You never heard of chemtrails? Nobody? Wow, okay, well, <coughs> let me They're show all you. Over the place. Yeah, every day they do, they, they, they spray the sky. Every day with chemtrails, not contrails. Contrails are a trail that runs behind a jet. You see a little short piece of, uh, of, of a white vapor, yeah. vapor going behind it. Now, see here. This is a jet used for chemtrails. See all these little jettles here? Chemicals come out of these holes. That's a crop dust and plane, but it's used for chemtrails. Here's what chemtrails look like. So you ever seen the sky looking something like that? Probably haven't paid attention. You ever seen that? Yeah. Those are chemtrails. Now, here's a here's a contrail. That's a jet. There's a contrail. It's shortly, it'll stay shortly behind the jet. If the jet moves on, that trail will follow it. But on a chemtrail, that's what you get. A long trail. They don't follow the jet like that. That's the difference. Now, in the chemtrail, there's all kinds of chemicals in the, in the chemtrail, including aluminum. And they fall down. Now, they say that the reason why they do that is so that they can see better with the satellites, viewing the Earth, like Google Earth, that kind of thing. They say this is like puts a haze, a coating over the sky so they can see it better. That's what they tell us. But there's some other stuff that I won't go into dealing with chemtrail that's dealing with your health. But we won't go there. Cilantro. Cilantro is one of the best herbs. You know cilantro is a type of parsley. That's one of the best herbs that we know about for getting rid of heavy metals, like aluminum, heavy metals from the chemtrails. Eat cilantro. Now, I make cilantro tincture out of mine. And, and you take that, and that'll help to clean your system out of heavy metals. Sprouts. Now, my wife has been sprouting since when? 10 years. About 15 years. She's been sprouting a long time and we sprouting in jobs. Matter of fact, well, I bought an automatic sprout, but she didn't like it. She went back in the jobs. We automatically kick the water in and whatnot. But uh, sprouts, these are, these are trays of sprouts. Now, you can sprout almost anything. And one of the most popular would be alfalfa sprout. You can really go to a restaurant or a health food store that's got a deli. You can see alfalfa sprout. You can sprout almost anything. Broccoli is a powerful one. Anybody recognize this guy? Who's that? Green That's the Charlie <laughs> Green Giant. Is it? Huh? Now tell me who this is coming up next. Who's that guy? Junior. <laughs> Shannon said that was Junior. What, 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 what's his name? Anybody know his name? That's sprout, that's right. This is a little sprout here. Now here's what they do not tell you about sprout. Now you see the giant, you see the little sprout. No, here's what they don't tell you. Broccoli. Do you know that in the broccoli sprouts, little Junior is much more power, powerful than his daddy? 400 times more. That's my wife said, 400 times more. That's right. He's more powerful, nutrition-wise. Or, or anti-cancer wise, he's more powerful now. If you start talking about calcium for calcium, phosphorus for phosphorus, then the adult plant would have more of those nutrients in it. But keep watching. Health benefits. The argument that broccoli sprouts don't contain more nutrients than broccoli doesn't consider the phytonutrients, they're very important, that fight cancer and other diseases while promoting more antioxidant activity. The antioxidants is what you want. Because antioxidants is the one that keeps the cancer down. And that's another whole story I won't go into that. To deal with free radicals and all that stuff. And that's dealing with electrons, losing their electrons, and that kind of stuff. Anyway, from 1992 to 1997, a, a John Hopkins, and you know John Hopkins is a very popular college, isn't it? Medical facility. John, a John Hopkins research team researched for broccoli's cancer fighting compound. They isolated the cancer fighting phytochemicals, sulforaphane. That's what they isolated, that's the sulforaphane. 
By 1997, John Hopkins research concluded that broccoli sprouts promoted much, much more cancer protection and antioxidant activity by way of sephoraphane than broccoli alone. Junior, that's little sprouts. Little sprout will kick the giant, knock him down. He run circles around the giant. Much more, it said. That's when little he be a But see, on the little commercial, you see the giant, the giant, oh, oh, oh. and that you think he's big and strong. The little, little sprout, oh, he's much stronger than no. Sprout will pick him up and throw him down. Sprout is much more powerful than daddy. Because remember, sprout got all the DNA to make that. It's concentrated in sprout. Right? Daddy's got his water down because he's grown some. The little sprout got all the concentration in it. That's why sometimes seeds are more powerful than the full grown thing. <coughs> Anybody ever hear of diatomaceous earth? No? Okay, it's called D. It's a fossil shell from fresh water. Diatomaceous earth. Now, this is a powerful If you get a chance, you can just go to the internet and type in DE and it'll come up with diatomaceous earth. But that's, that's what it's called DE. This powder, we take about maybe a tablespoon, a tablespoon, a tablespoon in, uh, in water, or you use some type of apple juice or something to take it in. This is a list of benefits for, for DE, including detoxification. It'll detoxify your whole system. Antibiotics. What did God give us for antibiotics? You know, most of the culinary herbs that we cook with, chive, parsley, cilantro, basil, rosemary, oregano, sage, dill, thyme. By the way, that is thyme. That's not thyme, folks. It's spelled like thyme that eats the salad. It's pronounced thyme. But anyway, uh, these are natural antibiotics. So eat your culinary herbs. I, like I say, I make tinctures out of all of these. You can also get essential oils. Here's the essential oils here. You sent your, anybody for me with essential oils? Nobody? Essential oil is the concentration of the, I guess you can call it the plant's blood. That's probably the best way I can describe it. The plant's blood in concentrated form. You only use a few drops of the essential oil. The, my favorite brand is Now brand. There's Gary Young, but his is stupidly, ridiculously overpriced. Now is, is, is a more reasonable price. These things are not cheap, but you only use just a few drops at a time. Oh, wait a minute. I hit a button. You only use a few drops at a time. Now, eucalyptus oil is good for any type of respiratory issues that you might have. Uh, orange is a good immune booster. Peppermint. Now, peppermint, I use peppermint. If I seldom have a headache, but if I do, a little peppermint oil will help that also. And sometimes I will have gastric reflux. Peppermint oil also helps with that. Um, cilantro, I mean uh, uh, citronella. Citronella, I only use citronella for bugs. And when we go out and there's mosquitoes outside of that, they can't stand that smell of citronella. So we use that for bugs. Tangerine, I haven't used much tangerine. Lavender is like a cure-all. There's so many things lavender is good for, including boosting the immune system. Clove. There's another good one. Clove is a high ORAC scale, which is the scale that measures the power of an antioxidant, is how powerful it is. But clove is one of the highest one on the, on the ORAC scale for antioxidant activity. Rose is also good for any dental issues that you might have. Clove, you most people probably know that. Uh, rosemary. Rosemary is a good blood cleanser. It's also good for the hair. A lot of hair products, natural hair products, will have rosemary in it. I make one that has rosemary in it also. Tea tree. Tea tree is almost like a cure-all. Tea tree is good for so many things. It's antibiotic, antimicrobial, antiviral, all that stuff. It's tea tree. There's a list of benefits for that. Now, jasmine, I only, I have all these oils in But jasmine, I only use jasmine for the smell. I'm sure there's some medicinal properties in it. I never really done much research on that. But uh, I like the smell of jasmine. So uh, certain products, like a hair product, I might put some jasmine in it. Diffuser. Now we have one that looks just like this pretty much, just a different color. I was blue. This diffuser, what happens is you, this is like a, an aquarium tank. You know the aquarium tank, you hook up and you bubbles, we're shooting to the aquarium to aerate the water. But this is for the air. What you do is you take the essential oil. I like to use frankincense. That's one of them, one of my favorites. 
This frankincense, um, there's so many different, we got so many oils. But anyway, uh, here, you see that little hole there? You will, you will put your essential oil in that hole. You plug it up. And then what this will do, you turn that on and it goes, and it'll blow that oil out this little hole here into your air. That helps to purify your room air. Now I have, we have one that's on the timing in our bedroom. It's on the timing. Just to come on and run for a few hours and shut off while we're sleeping. It's, it's helping to purify the air. Arthritis. Everybody know about Arthur, don't you? Huh? Hey, one old lady said Arthur is a, is a bad man. She said he's always beat me up. He'll never take me out. That Arthur's a bad dude. <laughs> but this this one here is called gout. Uh, actually, it's gouty arthritis. It's caused by uric acid crystals forming in the joints. That's what causes it. Acid crystals. Now, how do you give your little acid crystals? Did God give us something for that? Yes, he did. Apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar will go in and melt those acid crystal joints in the joint. We'll melt them. Now, we started off using Bragg's, only Bragg's because it was raw and unfiltered with the mother. Anybody know what the mother is? Hmm? Okay, the mother is that rag looking stuff that's in it. Looks like sludge. Yeah, most people like their juice to be clear. Right? But the mother is where the power is. The mother is actually the pulp from the apple. That's what gives it that nasty look. And some people, really, it's really, strange, it really looks nasty. But that's where the power is in that earth, in the apple. So apple cider vinegar, long as it's raw and unfiltered, you're good to go. We found, a, a, I think it's a Heinz brand that is, much cheaper than the brand. So we switched and used the cheaper one. Walmart's got them, please. Colon cleanse, that's another whole thing. We need to clean our colon now. And this is called a Kalima board here. And that's a whole system I'm not going to get into on that. I just want to just briefly touch on the colon cleanse. But it's important. That's your septic tank. That's your body's septic tank. It needs to be cleaned out periodically. Water will help do that. Drinking enough water will flush your system out. COPD, which is emphysema, bronchi uh, chronic bronchitis, or asthma. These are called COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Is what that stands for, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. Ginseng and eucalyptus are the two that I'm focusing on here. Those two, ginseng and eucalyptus. Now, I have, I make, I make a, I should have brought one with me. You know the little nasal, the little Vicks nasal thing that go, you know the little things there? Well, I bought some that the blank was just empty, and I fill them with different oils for different things. And uh, I've got one with eucalyptus in it that I use. Also, just to maintain, you know what I'm talking about? A lot of if I'm sitting at a computer desk working, I have one of the roads that I use for that. I might be working on the computer, and all of a sudden I just grab it, take me a couple of snorts and put it back down. <laughs> and move on. Huh? The folk, folk can snort cocaine and feel good about it. I can snort the natural stuff and feel good about it. Is that all right? I'm coming near the end now. Dental issues. Everybody know about clothes for dental. I mean, clothes are just a classic. Grandma can tell you about clothes. There's myrrh, the same myrrh that's in the Bible, myrrh gum, also in the white oak bar. Now, some years ago, my wife, when she was going to uh, the dentist, had her teeth cleaned every uh, two, three months, whatever, three months. Three, every three months. I made her uh, a concoction, and I use white oak bar, mainly myrrh and clove. May have been another that I added to that. And when she started taking that, she went to the dentist and said, what in the world are you doing? She said, whatever you're doing, you keep on doing it. So she told us that my husband made me a concoction here, so it works. Digestive tract bleeding, they're called ulcers most of the time, it's called ulcers. Everybody know what an ulcer is, right? What about ulcerative colitis? Anybody know what that is? Ulcerative colitis is, is, a, is a, an ulceration that takes place inside the colon somewhere. Now, what do you use for that? I had ulcerative colitis. I developed it. When I went to nursing school, I was working full time in the emergency room. And I was going to nursing school for that. They warned me, don't try to do that. Don't do not try to work full time and go to nursing school full time. The RE in school is tough, folks. So, uh, but me, I'm Mr. Macho, man. I can handle it. And that's how I was doing both, working full time and going to nursing school full time. And I developed ulcerative colitis from the stress. From the stress. <laughs> I do it from the stress. So the doctor put me on some azulfidine. 
That's the name of the medication, Pazolfidine. And I had hydrocodone, uh, little stuff I had to squirt up there. So I got interested in natural remedies then. That's how I started studying herbs. This was back in the 80s, in the 1980s. I started studying herbs, and then I, I would take an animal using white oak bark. Now, if you go to a white oak tree, we got one in our front yard too, we got them all over there. White oak tree done. This outer bark, you don't use that. Right there's an inner bark. Shave some of that off, and I took an animal with that. I also uh, used aloe juice from the aloe vera plant. See, aloe will heal anything from the mouth to the anus. Any kind of internal stuff that you got, any kind of bleeding or ulceration, aloe juice is powerful. For it. it would do that. And also, I drank the aloe juice. I took it there about a swallow or two twice a day. That's what I did with the aloe juice. And I used George's aloe juice. One reason why I chose George's is because they took the bitterness out. It tastes like water, pretty much, like spring water. Pretty much what it tastes like. And it worked. And I also took an enema using burdock root. When I went back to my doctor, he couldn't find any also because I know what he said to me. Well, I told him what I took. He said, well, maybe it's got some azulfidine in it. That's all he could say. Maybe it's got some azulfidine in it. Well, no, maybe azulfidine got some aloe in it. So I'm telling you, I'm telling you what Big Farmer would do. Big Farmer would go to the backyard, grab some dandelion, and put it in a concoction and call it hookah hookah too. <laughs> Huh? They'll make up a name for it, or they'll give a, a, a part of a chemical name so you won't recognize what it is when it's just dandelion from your yard. They want, do you think they want you to know that? No, why not? Because you go in your yard and sell it to the store. <laughs> wow. Oops. Bunker. <laughs> we have two friends that own this store here. Oh, that aloe is good for arthritis, too. That's right, aloe is good for, it's a list of stuff for aloe. I mean, there, there's so many herbs, I, would, I wouldn't be able to finish all the stuff. The herbs that, you know, that, that God put for our service. But aloe is a powerful herb. There's so many of them that's got such long list of benefits. Just when you're online sometimes, just start Googling different herbs, the benefit of different herbs, and you'll learn a lot about what God put here for our natural free use. All I got to do is gather it up and use it. Now, the bulk herb store is in... Um, Loboville is owned by James and Shoshana Easley. And uh, this is their phone number. And I got the address here. They're on Thursday. This moved, see. Uh, I think that's an old address. That's the old address. That's the old address, 3rd Avenue. It's on, what's that? Uh, is that 30, 31? What's that street? We're going into Loboville from Linden. When you went down 420, make that left turn. What is that, 31? 13, thank you, 13. She got a much better memory than I do. 13, 13, it's on 13. Anyway, there's a phone number here. Or you can look it up in the phone book or Google it if you're interested in getting urged from them. And this is my email address. Remember, I want to be in the information. And there's my email address. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. We, we want to thank you, Elder Michaels, for his uh, very enlightening uh, thank you. <laughs> presentation thank concerning you. our health this morning. And uh, hopefully we gain some information that will be helpful to us. I was telling him over when you talked about water, I'm not a water drinker. I have to make myself drink water. And I know I, Sometimes need, to more, I need to do I need to do no more to do more about that. Learn how to drink water because I know it's it's good for you, but just just don't drink nothing.